All right, hey, it's Paul with paulsailor.com. I'm here with a friend of mine in the Lumpini Park, and we're gonna record this video. It's kind of a follow-up to the Brexit video, which I think a lot of people enjoyed that one and seemed to get really super good feedback on that one. So this one is from my personal experience, and it's also talking about what's happening with the news about Brexit right now, and how there's a number of factors that kind of come together to manipulate you, even if they don't mean to. Okay? It includes your own mind, the way your own mind works, right? how our minds work as human beings. So let's, let's look at the different factors in this particular right now. Post-Brexit, there's a lot of articles that are getting forwarded, they're getting copied, they came from news wires and they're getting like thrown all over the internet. So let's look at those. The first one was the day after Brexit, or it was right after the, uh, you know, the UK decided to leave the EU, the vote finished, and there was an article I don't know what it originally was. I think it was a news wire, but it's easy to find because it's all over the place. And it says that uh, now people are searching for what happens if you leave the EU. Okay, so the original report said this. It said, Google announced that there's a 250% rise in searches for what happens if you leave the EU. Okay, so I saw that article and immediately a lot of red flags were going off for me. But uh, for somebody who's not an internet guy, maybe not as many would go off. So I wanted to kind of give you my experience on this one. So, okay, first thing is, Google does not announce things like this, okay? Google is a search engine and they have a fantastic analytics uh, division, okay? So you can install Google Analytics on your website and it'll tell you all the statistics about people coming to your website, you know, when they come, how often they come, what days they come, and then they have a great one for searches so that you can look at how many searches are happening and you can use that data to make a better website, to make a better advertisement and things like that, right? So there, think of them as like a library. So you go to the Google library, essentially, the analytics, and you can just, you can, uh, if you have a high skill, okay, you can figure out what's going on and you can make a better product or you can make a more popular product or you could target your product better. But using Google Analytics is really not easy, okay? That's, a, that's, a, that's I think, uh, is a key, th key point here, is that Google Analytics is difficult and complex especially for the newcomer to first time looking at Google Analytics, it's very easy to be tricked and think that something's happening when actually it's not happening. I'll give you an example. When I, uh, when I, I have a number of websites, uh, probably 10 right now on, ongoing, but I've had hundreds of my life. And when I make a website, I want, to, I want it to be popular, right? I want people to look at it. So I try to look at what, where the traffic is going today. So I look at the Google Analytics. So very often I've gone to Google Analytics and I found, I found something that I think is a big spike in traffic and I'll be like, yeah, this thing's huge. And I'll, I have this very, very, very top uh, Google internet friend of mine and, he, and I'll show it to him. I'll say, this is it. There's gonna be a super hot product and look at these searches. You can see this huge, uh, you know, this, this huge climb and I want to make a product based on the, the statistics. He'll, he won't even look at me. <laughs> He'll just sit there and like look at his computer. And I'll be like, okay, he's not happy. He's not, he's, something's wrong with my analysis. And he'll say, and I'll say, come on, what's, what's wrong? He'll say, well, you know, and he'll explain it to me like a child. You know, like, you know, well, Paul, you know, uh, that doesn't mean anything because of this and this and this. And I'll be like, oh, okay, okay. So then finally, when I finally am right about something, I'm always amazed, right? And then we launch a business and it's successful, right? So it's very obviously uh, true, right? So I'm always trying to improve my Google Analytics skills, right? Now, the reporter that wrote this article is a, is a reporter, okay? It wasn't published in one of the famous tech magazines like, like uh, you know, something like a Sesmos, you know, like a, or like something like even as mainstream as like a TechCrunch. TechCrunch has, uh, they have a, tech writers, they're writing about popular subjects, but they tend to do their research. It's a fairly accurate uh, site. So, but when you, see, when you see Google Analytics being analyzed in a mainstream publication, you should just immediately have red flags because most people don't have the skill or the experience to even understand what those analytics mean because you have to compare it to a lot of things. You need a, you need a high level understanding to even get in there. That's why people hire a special Google advertising person to handle their ads and to pick the topics that they use in the, uh, cop the copy they use. Okay, so I don't wanna go into it too much, but basically it's difficult, okay? It's a, it's a specialty, it's a specialty. So that article said, Google announced there's been a 250% rise in the searches for what happens if you leave the EU. And in the article it said, and you can read it, uh, it's all over the internet. Just search what happens if you leave the EU. There's a, tons of articles. There's a, there's a one famous one that was written and then everybody copied it. Okay, and okay, the, the, 
the problem is, there's so many problems with this. One is, like I said, Google doesn't know. The second problem is 250% rise for a, something that doesn't exist is, 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 is kind of pathetic. It, it basically means that nobody was searching for it. Okay, because percentages, the way they work, obviously if there's, like if you look for what happens if you put a rock in the oven, okay, you're not gonna have a lot of searches for that, right? There's gonna be very low search volume. And it's gonna, it's not gonna be zero probably, but it'll be down towards zero, right? Okay, so if I, if I, if I search for, like I, I search tonight, I go back and I say, what happens if you put a rock in the oven? And then uh, you watch this video and then you search, what happens if you put a rock in the oven? There's gonna be a 100% rise of the, of the search, right? But it doesn't mean anything because nobody's searching for that, right? I just said it, you searched it, and that's it. It's not, it's not, not being searched, right? So when something like the, the Britain leaves the EU, this is a huge historical thing, right? So if it was statistically valid, then there would be like tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands or even millions of percents rise, right? So it's very easy. My statistics teacher in school said, there's two kind of lies. There's statistics and statistics, right? There's, you, can, you can take a statistic and you can make it look big, right? And for yourself, right? And that's what this reporter did. 250% rise of searching for, <laughs> here we got a little parade coming by here. Uh, searching for uh, that, it doesn't mean anything. So that's the first thing. Second thing is, the argument of the article was, right? It's nice to have friends. So we got all these friends here making background noises for us. Uh, okay, so the, the second thing in the article is it said, it made it, it made it very clear, and if you read the articles, you'll agree, I think, is that they made it look like the people that chose to leave, like the Brexit people, were now searching for what happens if you leave the EU. So we've already proven that there's no... There's been no statistical rise until the article came out. So keep that in mind. After the article came out, things changed. Okay. But the second thing is, his, his, his uh, theory was that only people who decided to leave, the, the leavers, uh, the Brexit people, behind the Brexit, that they, ch they searched that. And he has no way of knowing that. Okay. My guess, and you see what you think about this. If, let's say you were voting, right? And you were voting to stay in the EU. Okay. And then the final tally was that Brexit, you're leaving the EU. Would you be more likely to search what happens if you leave the EU for the first time? Or would it be somebody who's already wanted to leave and decided to leave and made a decision and voted for it, right? Basically, logic tells you it's going to be a higher percentage of somebody who is surprised, right? It's like, oh my, oh my goodness, we've, we've now left the EU. What happens? You know, what happens if you leave the EU, right? It'd be a pretty common search because they want to find out about their future. So I'm not going to say that's the way it is. I'm, that's my guess. But again, that's just a guess. Okay, it's not necessarily true. But anyway, we have almost no rise in searches, so it doesn't matter. So that that article was written, and, it, and it, you got to remember my last video is through this whole thing. Richard Dewsbury at one of the top UK newswires who did my first article that got got us in every magazine on the planet. He told me that there's an average of 20 to 40 minutes. 30 minutes is the average that reporters today have to write an article about any topic, okay? So basically, reporters don't have any time, okay? They're writing articles, and they're just like, just pounding them out, right? They're working hard, right? They're doing their best, right? But when you're writing about something as important as this, you know, 30 minutes is not enough, right? Like when I used to write a paper for high school, it took me three weeks, right? And I, and I talked to a lot of people, I did a lot of research. Today, you, the news that you're reading is written in 30 minutes, and it's not written by a professional. But I mean professional. I don't mean a professional writer, but for example, they're using, in this case, Google Analytics. It's not a Google Analytics professional. It's a journalist that's making this assumption, right? Or writing this article, right? So there's a lot of things that are going into this. So you get my drift. We're not talking about some kind of conspiracy. We're talking about a number of things that kind of work against you. you they don't have enough time. He doesn't, there's no way you can be an expert on everything. Google Analytics is very complex. Uh, you know, many things are very complex, but you have to write an article in 30 minutes. How much time do you have for that? You have no time at all, right? You're just going to pump it out. Right? <laughs> Brexit, 30 minutes. All right. Uh, you know, French uh, protests, you know, 30 minutes. Uh, American, uh, you know, 4th of July, 30 minutes, right? You're just going to pump it out. Boom, 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 boom. Next, right? And, but the problem is, what happens then? Okay, so now we've talked about the difficulty of writing Goodwin, the fact that there's not enough time. What happens after that first article is written? Okay, this is this is really key for you to understand is today one person will write an article 
and a lot of people will repost it or copy it. I don't know what they call it, but basically there'll be an original and then another magazine. So let's say it's in Time Magazine. So Time Magazine will write something. And then in another magazine, they'll have the exact same article word for word. They'll, and at the bottom, they'll say uh, credit Time Magazine original, you know, something like that will, will be there, right? So it's, it's legal. They're not stealing it, but they're just reposting it, right, in, in various places. So that's, what, that's the way it works today. One guy writes a 30-minute article. Everybody else reposts it. Okay, so think about how bad it's getting. It's bad, you guys. I mean, the first guy doesn't even know what he's talking about. And he's only got 30 minutes. And then there's other guys who don't even have 30 minutes because they have 30 seconds. So they're just going to repost the article. So they don't even do any research, okay? All they do is it's in, it's in the mirror. Okay, it's good enough for us. Boom, next. You spend 30 minutes on the next article, right? So that's, that, that is how pathetic it is getting now. And it's not anybody's fault. It's, the main fault is that, is that print doesn't make any money anymore. You know, it's just gone down and down and down since the internet. And now they don't have a very good model for making money. Okay, so this is where we're at today. Now, how does this work in your brain? We talked about how your brain works and how your brain tricks you with this kind of stuff. Okay, there's a rule. There's like a 15% rule. So for example, let's say that I think that uh, alien, aliens killed John F. Kennedy. Okay, so I think aliens killed John F. Kennedy or I think that the moon is made of cheese, right? And now if I believe that, you're gonna think I'm crazy, right? But if more people believe it, for whatever reason, there's a certain, there's a threshold, like a tipping point of belief, okay? This is statistically proven. Is there's a, there's a, there's a, like a, there's a tipping point of belief. So once it gets to 15% of the population believes something, like really deeply, like, you know, they really believe it, they're like true fans, then about 50% of the people will believe it on a, like, like a, like a surface basis. Okay. So they'll say, yeah, that's accurate. Yeah. I, I've heard that. It's, and the reason why is they've heard it from so many people. So they had a, they had cookies with their friend, a coffee and cookies with their friend. And he said this. So he said that uh, people are searching, uh, you know, uh, what happens if you leave, you leave the EU and it's the guys who chose the Brexit. Say, oh, okay. And then you go online and you say, oh, there it is in my favorite newspaper. And then you, and then you see another article you say, it's a repost of that same article. You say, oh, there it is. And then you go to Facebook. And now Facebook is, is your friends are reposting that same article. So once it gets to 15%, you're going to be much more likely to believe that article statistically. I'm not saying you necessarily, but people in the world are statistically going to be very high. It's very, the, the percentages skyrockets once you see things reused over and over. So it's, it's like, it's not like they're doing it to you, but it's like your own mind and your friends and social media and the way that the media operates, because they don't have any money right now uh, anymore, I should say, uh, that, that make it just so bad. You have to, that's why you need to think, you really need to think, is you have to look at these articles and say, what is, what is behind this? Like, you know, what, what is, there's no proof. 250% is nothing, okay? It's nothing. 250% for something that doesn't happen, it's nothing. He could have done it in his, if, if, if he, okay, let's say there's one search. And then if he took his cell phone and he searched it, and then he told his wife, hey, can you search uh, what happens to leave you? And then he goes to his office computer and he searches. It's up 300, 400% already, okay? And then, now here's what happens next. What happens next is, and is, is that, that now he prints an article about this. Well, guess what happens? Everybody starts searching. What happens if you leave the EU, right? In fact, for myself, because I use keywords on my videos to get traffic, I actually used the keyword in my last video I said, what happens if you leave the EU? Like there's these key tags you could put in an article. And I figured, okay, after the article went out, I knew that people were gonna start searching it, right? It wasn't true when he wrote it, but now it's true now. So I said, okay, well, maybe I'll get some traffic from that. So I put that as a keyword, right? So you can see, it's like the dog just chasing his tail and it all becomes true in the end, right? But what is true when you read it? What is originally true? And what can you base things on, right? So you can't change just human nature, okay? You're gonna believe things. So for example, if a number of people move in your neighborhood, okay, let's say a bunch of Chinese move in your neighborhood, right? And after it passes the 15% mark, that's when all the changes start happening in your neighborhood. Because all of a sudden there's 15%, it went from 10 to 15. It doesn't matter what the people are. They could be Chinese, they could be from New York, they could be Muslims, whatever it is. Once it reaches that certain range, you're gonna start seeing restaurants opening up. You're gonna start people talking differently, believing differently about how they should hold, do their lawns, about how often they should, uh, about, you know, votes in the uh, local uh, residential uh, group, you know, how often you should uh, keep things up and things like that. 
the changes all happen after that 15% tipping point. Okay, so your mind, with the way it is, it's being used against you. Don't let it happen. Keep thinking. Keep thinking. I'd love your comments below. I'd love to hear what you think. And uh, let's keep, let's go, let's go. Paul signing off from uh, Lumpini Park in Bangkok, Thailand, just before the monsoon rains start. <laughs> Thanks. Was that any good?